been great work with the F-35 in this deployment. It's also been pretty unique being the uh, first F-35 deployment to go out and do uh, an extended deployment through the, uh, through the Middle East. So it's been a lot of fun. We've changed the scenery a lot. This airplane's a, a large step up in capability and just changes the game for TAC Air Aviation on the Mew. So increased capabilities, I think just the long range strike, uh, a lot of the electronic warfare capabilities of this aircraft over some of our predecessors and legacy aircraft give commanders on the ground and on the seas and air uh, added capabilities, whether it's uh, reconnaissance type missions, electronic warfare, or actual close combat support for ground troops. This airframe offers an added capability that maybe wasn't there in the same way previously. It's a huge significance because not only is it the first of its kind, but it just shows how much the F-35 plays a big role in the combat missions it's been in so far. This was the first combat employment of the F-35 owned by the United States. So coming in, not really knowing what we didn't know, trying to figure things out, implement policies and procedures that can be used by future deployments. That's really been the MO of this MU and this deployment was setting the precedence for the future of the program. The best part of this deployment has been honestly everything. Uh, we got a great group of guys, maintainers, not only that we work with, but the guys up top in the S shops putting at work. Uh, we got a great chain of command that helped us. So just the history making part of it, I think, is key. VMFA 211 has a strong history, going back to VMF 211 at Wake Island, World War II. Uh, being able to come out here as the first United States F-35 combat employment and continue that legacy and tradition. Great successes out here with our sortie generation, combat ordnance employments on actual real world enemy targets. Being able to carry that legacy was really significant.